the story that I heard on Steve Austin's show uh, on the WWE Network about you putting Cypress Hill to sleep is probably <laughs> my favorite story that I have ever heard when it comes to legendary, you know, par- oh. go ahead. <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. So, so AJ, for those that don't know, I'll summarize. I don't want you to, have to tell the whole entire story again because it is a little long. But I guess... I guess old Mr. Taker here, sitting next to us here, uh, Mr. Taker was a pretty legendary drinker. Legendary drinker. And there was this one tour they were on, and uh, he was going to go to bed because I guess he had a long night before. And stop me if I'm ever wrong on any of this, please, Mr. Taker. It was several It was several long nights before. I was just going to take one night off. That was it. Just going to take one night off. You were heading to your room, walking through the lobby, and I guess Cypress Hill was either there with the WWE or not, and they kind of gave him like, uh, oh, you're going to bed? Like, like, uh, like, oh, are you tired? Like, oh, is that, is that kind of how it went? Yeah, that's kind of how it went. I was on my way up to the hotel, had to pass the hotel bar. I was just going to stop in and say, Hey, you know, what's up guys. I didn't even know Cypress Hill was in there. And, uh, so I was just going to say hello to, to, to the WWE guys and then go to bed. And next thing you know, you know, that, Hey, take hey, guys from Cypress Hill, they're on tour over here too. Hey guys, how you doing? It's nice to meet you guys. Yeah. I've had, I've had a rough week. I'm going to, I'm going to go to bed and, and somebody, you know, cracked off like, Oh man, I heard you could go. We heard you could party. And I was like, yeah, well not tonight. You know, kept, kept chirping. And it was just like, okay, boys, here we go. <laughs> And that, and if I'm not mistaken, that night ended with you and X Pac in one of their rooms. And that once you saw the final Cypress Hill member fall asleep, you woke up X Pac and was like, "Hey, our job is done here. Let's go to bed." Exactly, and it was like leaving the uh, gunfight at the OK Corral. <laughs> <laughs> There was a plume of smoke that had come down to about three feet above the floor. And, uh, you know, as you as I was looking around, it's just like bodies strewn everywhere. <laughs> X-Pac was, he was laying on my shoulder like that, unconscious. And I grabbed him and leave no man behind. <laughs> <laughs> the, door, the door opens up out of the room and yeah, it was, uh, whew. <laughs> there was some rough there were some rough uh rough rough dudes in the lobby the next day that's what i was about to say i think my favorite part of the whole story is the fact that you said you had an early call time the next morning and you just no sold it because you didn't want anybody to think that you were in a terrible spot but you were absolutely getting crushed inside your head oh, oh i was ham- i was still drunk <laughs> <laughs> I, stood, I stood i stood in a cold shower for five minutes just trying to you know get it together and you know finally i said all right here we go and i walked down and Hey guys, what's up? You know, and everybody, you know, like roadies were holding on to dudes. <laughs> it was it was a bad scene. Is there and, any is there anybody else that you guys? Because there's a not as legendary story as what you did to Cypress Hill in the WWE world. Mark Henry had to carry me home, uh, SummerSlam, New York City, <laughs> back to a hotel. I mean, we had a hell of a night. But was there? I, I think back in the day, that was something that was kind of like understood. Like, hey, the wrestlers, the hotel lobby, after the work is done, a good time is going to be had. Was there any legendary partiers that you ran into, whether it was in the WWE business or outside? Because the way Stone Cold was talking about, you were the guy that the WWE was like, hey, this is our guy. If we have to have somebody drink against somebody taker is our guy was there was there anybody else you ran <laughs> was there oh, anybody man. else that you encountered let's get warmed up <laughs> <laughs> we there not anybody that i really not no not anybody i can really think of that most people stayed clear of us you know we, we had a you know we were still the kind of the pariahs back then and nobody you know wanted to associate much with us so we associated with ourselves and and we just demolished ourselves. And uh, <laughs> hey, I have we this. Didn't, we didn't miss out on any good times. That's for sure. I have this quote that you know, because nowadays with nutritionists and scientists and all this shit, there uh, everybody's like, 
I always had this quote that a team comes together a lot better around a keg than they do kale. Those moments, though, where you're sharing a beverage with each other and kind of learning more about each other, that carries into your workplace. And football teams, that carries into the locker room. The chemistry is higher. Whenever you're talking about a wrestling locker room, that chemistry has to be very high, I'd assume, for the show to go on every single week. Is that accurate? Is it? Has there ever been a time where somebody in a locker room was like kind of, uh, I don't want to say an outcast, but a little bit indifferent and kind of fucked up maybe what everybody else had going on oh yeah you've always got i mean and then it doesn't matter i don't think what sport it is or our entertainment genre there's always somebody that's a little different and you know we were pretty much a, a pretty inclusive group you know because we we travel together everywhere well, overseas more so and when we're in the states we go kind of we travel separately but um you know there was always an opportunity uh for you to be part of whatever and then my role i think what 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 you know people valued with me is they knew that i went out and i and i had a good time and they could trust you know they could trust that okay well you know he's doing the same things we are but they always knew that when it came time you know when it came bell time you know it's time to go and you can't yeah. You can't uh, say, hey, uh, well, we had a long night, remember? Yeah, I was there all night with you. It's time <laughs> to go. It's time to work. And then we can go do it all over again. But you can't, you know, you can't, you can't dog it in the ring because we had a late night. And I think that's what, uh, you know, a lot of guys respected that because, you know, more times than not, I was one of the last guys standing at the bar. And then the first guy, one of the first guys on the bus the next morning. Um, Legend. And, you know, I think they, they, they appreciated that and, you know, knew that, you know, they knew they could trust me and they knew that, you know, regardless of my relationship with, with the, you know, the corporate side that I was still one of the guys. And, uh, um, and I, and I definitely agree that that kind of camaraderie that you share with, you know, having a beer, whatever it is, it didn't matter. You know, if you didn't drink, you didn't drink, that's fine. Um, but be be part of the be part of it, and um, you know people ask me all the time. <laughs> I don't know if this is kind of in the same elk, but you know people ask me all the time about writing a book, and I'm I tell people I was like, look, the things that would make my book good <laughs> are the things I can't talk about. <laughs> my mom, one, my mom's still alive. <laughs> Two, I, I enjoy being married to Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm pretty sure the statue of limitations don't run out. On the <laughs> I'm kidding there, but but yeah. but but the things that, you know, everybody's like, yeah, that would be a great book. But the stuff, all that stuff that I shared with those guys, uh, you know, I value that stuff, and, and I don't, you know, I, I don't need to tell the world about that. You know, it's not fair to you know somebody else's life that. You know, we had that time together. We did these things, and I think it's just better having those memories and uh, hell yeah, and having that trust amongst you know good friends. Look good, feel good, feel good, play good, play good, pay good, pay good, live good, live good, die good.